Hello, the point of this video is to walk folks through how to calculate soil CEC and base saturation. Uh, we're going to talk a little bit in the beginning about why uh, these concepts are important, what they mean, and then get into a little bit of the nitty gritty detail. Now, when you get a soil test back, these are commonly calculated for you and on the soil test, but for those that want to kind of dive deeper and get a little bit better understanding where those numbers come from, how they're calculated, this is the video for you. So CEC is a fundamental soil property, cation exchange capacity. It's the ability of that soil to retain nutrients and supply nutrients to the crops. Uh, it's um, really a measure of charge. It's a negative, the total quantity of negative surface charges on that soil. And it's measured commonly in soil testing labs uh, by summing cations. You'll hear that CEC was measured by some of cations. And what that means is these cations, these negatively charged ion, or sorry, these positively charged ions, uh, such as um, calcium, magnesium, potassium, and sodium, these are our base cations. Then we have acid cations, uh, including hydrogen, aluminum, ammonium, manganese, iron, etc., etc. So uh, we have both basic and, and acidic cations, and they all have positive charges, and they stick to the soil, they adhere to the soil, because soils are typically negatively charged, and so that's why CEC such an important property. The picture uh, over here on the right, uh, we can see a low CE soil, CEC soil with a uh, few, not very many negative charges, and the associated positively charged cations attracting to them. And then on the, the very right, we have a high CEC soil with a lot of negative charges, and you can see uh, the cations, um, both positive, both, sorry, both base and acid cations attracted to that. So CEC is, it's important to notice it's a potential of nutrient availability and supply, but it's not a particularly a direct measurement because uh, the nutrients could be there, but they might not be, right? So, and just to give you some idea, uh, it's driven really strongly by soil type and uh, primarily by clay content, okay? So uh, here's just a range of CEC values that you might encounter, uh, three to five with the really sandy soils. Uh, most of the soils that we find in the Midwest in Ohio would be somewhere between 5, 10, and 25. So in these loam, silty loams, um, we get above 25 and they really start getting to heavy clay soils, very heavy clay soils, and even into the organic soils or the muck soils. So that you can see the, the, the range can be quite, quite large. Now let's talk about base saturation. Okay, so base saturation is the percentage of CEC occupied by base cations. Okay, so again, we can define this as our calcium, magnesium, potassium, and sodium uh, divided by CEC. So it's a percentage of the CEC, um, the percentage of the CEC that the, the bases actually represent. Uh, this is gonna increase, as base cations increase, and base saturations increase, our pH is by default gonna increase, okay? so. Uh, again, we look at this picture, we've got a high CEC soil with a low base saturation and a high base saturation. So the difference between these two is that the one on the left, the low base saturation, has more acid cations or exchangeable acidity occupying those exchange sites. The one on the right has less. So the pH on the right uh, would have higher base saturation, higher pH and the soil on the left would have lower base saturation, lower pH. And we can also think about calcium or magnesium saturation, et cetera, et cetera. So calcium saturation as a percentage is essentially the amount of calcium uh, on the exchange sites that um, as a function or as a percentage of the total CEC. So this is a management tool that some growers uh, use heavily and pay quite a bit of attention to how much of the exchange site is calcium, how much is magnesium, and uh, we can often calculate calcium-magnesium ratios. These are on soil uh, test results, and this is essentially a ratio of the calcium to magnesium saturation percentage. Okay, so uh, again, there's a lot of uh, management implications in terms of how people think uh, about and are using their soil test information. CC units uh, are kind of a, an interesting beast. Uh, technically, the unit that you'll get on most all soil tests is a mill equivalent 
per 100 gram of soil. So what does that actually mean? Well, mill equivalents are a measurement of charge and they're used instead of mass. So if you look at, say, percent organic matter, that's a mass of organic matter per mass of soil. Here with CEC, we're talking about charge, charge per mass of soil, um, or par charge per weight of soil, we could say. So charge is more useful when talking about ion exchange than, say, a mass percentage. So that's why we use this kind of funky unit of mill equivalents per 100 grams. So again, it's a charge per weight of soil. So the question is, how do we go from a concentration of nutrients when we actually submit a soil sample and have a soil test, they actually extract and quantify the concentration of calcium in that, say, malic-3 or ammonium acetate extraction, the concentration of magnesium, et cetera, et cetera. And that somehow gets magically converted to a CEC number. Well, we're going to do a little bit of a deep dive right now to talk about how that's actually done. So, Again, we're thinking of CEC as a summation of cations, both base and acidic cations, and that's what we're going to get into. So uh, the periodic table, thinking back again, you know, maybe high school or college chemistry, and uh, we've got this periodic table. Here are our base cations of calcium, magnesium, sodium, and potassium. Uh, these at the atomic level have weights and charges. So calcium, for example, says there's approximately 40 grams per mole of calcium, that's the atomic weight, and it's got a charge or a valence of plus two. Okay, so we can take the atomic weight, divide that by the charge, and we get what's called a gram equivalent weight. Okay, so our, one of the things that we need to do to kind of make this make sense and make these numbers line up is that we first have to convert these gram equivalents to mill equivalents and we do that by taking a thousand mill equivalents per equivalent and we get again this uh, thousand mill equivalents okay the second step then is to set mill equivalents for a hundred grams of soil again our unit is mill equivalents per hundred grams of soil so we do this divide by hundred and uh, you know we have zeros cancel and then we get this uh, equals 10. So this essentially becomes a multiplier that we use. So we take our gram equivalent weight and we want to convert it from a gram equivalent to a mill equivalent per 100 gram of soil. We multiply these values uh, in this rightmost column by 10 and then we get essentially a conversion factor of sorts, mill equivalent per 100 gram of soil. Okay. So here we are. Now this is really, for the most part, where you need you can start for a soil test. So we get a soil test value. Say he's here. Say it's a malic three extraction reported in part per million. We've got two thousand part per million calcium, uh, two forty magnesium, et cetera, et cetera. Again, here's our conversion factor. What we do is we divide this soil test level in ppm by our uh, mill equivalent per hundred gram. We're taking it from a concentration in this step, a concentration to a charge. So now we're at, for calcium, we're at 10 mill equivalents per 100 gram of soil. Okay. It's important to note that if your soil test levels are in pounds per acre and not ppm, you first need to convert from pound per acre into ppm, most commonly by dividing by two. Okay. So if it was 40, uh, 4,000 pounds of calcium per acre, malic three extraction then we're going to divide that by two and get it back to 2,000, okay? So then there's this uh, acid piece, okay? So this exchangeable um, acidity is also important because we know it's not just these base cations. There's also acidity very commonly in our soil. So we do this, and this is a bit of a, a, a magic box here, but there's an empirically derived relationship that have, has been used for Ohio soils. And we do this by taking the buffer pH in our soil test. That, again, is our soil that's had a little bit of uh, liming solution added, and then we measure pH. We take that, we divide that buffer pH by 7, and we multiply this by 12, okay? And that gives us this value of 4.8 mill equivalents per 100 gram. So it's important to note that if our buffer pH is at 7 or above, um, some soil test reports will just say 0 for buffer pH if it's over 7. If it's 7 or above, this becomes 0, and then we essentially don't have to worry about the exchangeable acidity. So um, 
uh, if we do have a changeable acidity, which this soil test indicates we do, then what we do is we're going to uh, sorry add our base cations here, which is the 12.4, and our exchangeable acidity at 4.8. And our value, our final value for a CEC is 17.2 milliequivalents per 100 grams. So, so that's really the, the step. And again, we can kind of eliminate those first few slides when we're talking about periodic table, just using this uh, conversion piece taking our soil test level, dividing it by our milliequivalent per 100 gram conversion, and you can get the, the essentially charge per unit at that point and, and add those up and you get the CEC. Okay, we can also talk about calcium saturation again by taking uh, calcium, the uh, milliequivalent of calcium divided by the CEC. And so in this example, 58% of our exchange sites would be calcium. We can do the same thing with magnesium. So instead of 10, we're using two, two milliequivalents of magnesium. And so that would be essentially 12% magnesium. So, you know, these are the kind of the, the basic uh, pieces of, of running through this. Um, and so uh, hopefully that gives you a, a little bit better understanding of what we're, what we're dealing with. And just to kind of summarize, I'll say that CEC is a fundamental soil property. It's very important for plant nutrient availability. It really dictates how a soil is managed, fertilized. It's one of the first things that most you know, crop consultants, uh, farmers, a lot of people will look at CEC, one of the first things they look at when they get soil test results to kind of calibrate, know what kind of soil you're dealing with. Um, CEC is a measure of uh, some of cations, it's a, the addition of base cations plus exchangeable acidity. Uh, conversely, base saturation is really how much of that CEC is the base cation. So base saturation as a percentage is percentage of cations versus CEC. And then calcium um, can be, again, a percentage, calcium saturation is a percentage of CEC. Uh, I'll direct folks to uh, this um, citation if you really, really want to get into the nitty gritty details. And I will uh, recognize our funder for this, uh, USDA uh, ORI. That all in. Thank you.